What would it take to inspire a generation of like-minded entrepreneurs? Access to finance, purpose-built mentorship, or a capacity to create? In Nigeria, Africa's biggest commercial hub, it is said that at least 24% of the working class population, according to SBM Intelligence, are entrepreneurs. Now that's a fair number of Nigerians, both young and old, dominating the business space in a competitive environment. This is a journey into the thoughts and footprints of a vision, a vision that has thrived for 20 eventful years. Long before enterprise development was considered relevant, before entrepreneurship as a long-term intervention for economic growth became desirous, a man called Fola Adiola had a vision. Every time we needed people in the bank, we would call for applications. The number of applications that we'll get will hit 2,000. And we'll take all these young people through a process. And uh, the question came jogging my mind. Where do they go? They qualify for the assignments that we had for them, but we could only take a number. And I said to myself, if we keep rejecting 2,000 people, we are just going to create a society of extremely talented people who are not provided with work. So I made it my problem. In tinkering with that charter, there was a Eureka moment where I was able to change get a great job, get the, the, the verb to get. And I changed it to the verb to create, create a great job. If you created a great job, then you get a great job. And that was what led to the creation of Faith Foundation. The aim is remove all these talented people. If they did their business, they're able to run their lives, pay their bills. Hopefully they will get married from their families and be responsible for their families. And if things go well, they are able to take in other people who will then take care of their families and will, be, will begin to contribute. That was what led to the creation of Faith Foundation. Faith Foundation, Nigeria's foremost entrepreneurship support non-profit organization with a goal to enable aspiring and emerging Nigerian entrepreneurs to start, grow and scale their businesses has grown into a legacy of national influence from an idea that started in a one-room office into a source of inspiration for thousands of Nigerians in the last two decades. What I thought I was founding at that time was a Fola Diola trust for uh, uh, entrepreneurs. But I didn't want it to become something that the city or the society or the environment will not embrace. Let's name it in a manner that it can be embraced by people. And all we did was just to take the first letter of everything that was there and it came to fate. So why not? Let's uh, take our destiny, our fate in our hands and let's push. That's, that's how Faith Foundation got created. Immediately we realized that, you know, if this idea is going to um, go anywhere, we needed a thinker, we needed somebody who is also driven. Uh, um, we were going to get the best person that we could, uh, we could get, and that's what, what we did. I had this conversation with Ndidi Oneli, who was in Chicago at that time, uh, with McKinsey. And she wanted to come back to Nigeria. And I offered her four, four different jobs that she could come to do. I could take her in the bank. Uh, I had an investment in a conglomerate at that time. I introduced that investment to her. The last one I said to her was that, okay, there is this one. It's an idea that we have just put in place. Um, will that interest you? And she said of the four that I listed, that was the one that interested her. So we brought Ndidi from McKinsey to Faith Foundation to come and drive the vision. I met Mr. Adiola when I was a student at the Harvard Business School. He came as a case protagonist to discuss the Guarantee Trust Bank. And then we stayed in touch after that. And a year later, he called me and he said, 
I hear you want to move back to Nigeria and I want to offer you some options, some jobs. And he listed four. And the last one was Faith Foundation. You know, he told me something. He said, on my 60th birthday, I want to celebrate by having a field of all the entrepreneurs that I've supported, you know, with their products and services. And I said, you know, this is the vision. And that vision for me was phenomenal because we have to create wealth in Nigeria. And the best people who have the energy, the skills, the creativity to create that wealth are young people. We live in a young world, a world where 40% of the 7.8 billion humans alive are under 24 years old. And if you streamline this data back home, you'd realize that 54% of Nigeria's population are within ages 15 to 64 years. And if somebody didn't get into a guarantee trust bank or didn't get into a shell and so on and so forth, it wasn't faith they were looking for. As, as an alternative, okay, that was a challenge. We overcame that because uh, Ndidi herself and the 17-man the, the board of eminent people uh, were enough to, to convince them. So, so many people will come because they haven't got a job, okay, let's see what this thing is like. But we were unrelenting and we just kept going um, until uh, Many years later, when we found the real people that we were looking for. And we started with a very clear mandate. We knew we had to provide the training. So it was going to be a six-month training program. We knew we had to incorporate a mentorship scheme. So we had to design probably the first formal mentoring program in Nigeria. And then we had to provide them with access to funding. So we started the business plan competition. We incorporated an investors forum and even an accelerator and incubator to help them with the execution of the business plan. And so we start with a class of 20 entrepreneurs. To get these entrepreneurs, we went to schools, we went to churches. I remember handing out flyers at the end of services, you know, trying to convince young people to come and join Fate. And we had a, many, many applications. We selected 20 young people as a pioneer class. And many of them have achieved tremendous success as entrepreneurs today. For 20 years, Fate Foundation has been at the forefront of not just inspiring young entrepreneurs to start, grow and scale their businesses, but also grooming them through training and mentorship to keep them soaring in their entrepreneurship journey. I was a young person creating this organization with a phenomenal board and we were blessed with some visionary board members who were pioneers in their own right, but understood the vision, bought into it, contributed their wealth, their resources, their time, and their intellect. Mr. Adiola, from the beginning, set the values of excellence, integrity, and hard work. Those values have permeated the entire organization, and every single ED after me has been committed to those values. The second is partnerships. I think from the beginning, we realized that we couldn't do it alone. You know, to build this type of organization, you need to work with funders, you need to work with volunteers, a range of stakeholders from public, private, and nonprofit. And that concept of partnership has been the bedrock of faith success. And then the third, I'd say, is the commitment to impact, measuring impact. You know, Mr. Adiola actually said, I want to help 5,000 entrepreneurs start businesses and grow businesses. That was a vision he set from day one. Mr. Adiola wanted us to compensate the individuals who'd come in as trainers and mentors, and I said, absolutely not. They have to come in as volunteers. At the time that we set up Faith Foundation, if we look at the cost of getting the best brains, what do we pay for them? Who's going to pay? The same people who, are, who don't have work, right, and don't have means, how much can we charge them that will get us to pay these other people, number one? Number two, we also realized that apart from religious platforms or platforms such as Red Cross, um, Boy Scout and, and such platforms, uh, the elites or Nigerians who are educated did not have many platforms to give back to society. So we introduced this process as a means of giving back. We run ourselves elegantly. We uh, uh, prepare accounts. Um, KPMG are auditors. They've, they've been our auditors since um, Arthur Anderson. Um, we account for everything. We go back to the donor. We go back to the to the volunteers, and we recognize them. We put them there out for people to see. Um, I'm also a volunteer in that regard. I go to stand in front of people, 
share what I know with them. And um, we realize that there are so many people who are, uh, who are willing to help this society once the platform is sincere. And um, there are many, many, many people in that phylum that are still willing to talk to us. Early in the year 2000, I had just come back from the US. I had um, resigned from employment. And I was looking to develop SMEs and, you know, to, because part of my mantra is actually helping others to reach their full potential. So there I was at this training program as a facilitator. And I met this other very engaging lady, Indidi, who was also the other facilitator. And really, um, once the training program was over, I remember we were outside the building. Uh, that the step officers were in and we were introducing ourselves to each other and she told me who she was and told me about Fit Foundation. Fit Foundation was just starting then and invited me to visit the offices and first to have a further discussion around it because I had a lot of interest in developing small and medium-sized businesses and so when I went to the offices and I had this meeting with NDD, you're the first ED of FATE, um, I felt that FATE was engaging in a part of the market that no one else was at that time. Earliest milestones was clearly recruiting our first class, then graduating our first class, having the first business plan competition, having the first investors forum, having our first model entrepreneur awards, our first FATE celebration. We actually got Wharton to donate a free executive education program for our first model entrepreneur. Dr. Patitome challenged us that Nigeria was going downhill. What are we all going to do with our future? And at that time, I mostly worked in finance. So I just sort of felt that I needed to use finance to have some social development impact. I started studying about SMEs and businesses, entrepreneurship. That was when I got to know about the vacancy at Faith Foundation. So the pioneer executive director was leaving after one year. It just sort of made me feel that, okay, I want to now start using my career to have social impact. And the more I learned about what Faith was doing, the more I wanted to be a part of the Faith Foundation. So that's how I joined. Faith Foundation and of course I was inspired by the story of Mr. Adela to how he set up GTB and all of that. Since I was there for five years, um, we more or less built the organization, um, you know, introduced a number of programs, some of them are still running today. I've seen an idea being brought to life to me, it's one thing that I've always um, had, you know, really enjoyed doing. One of the key things you will see that differentiates Faith Foundation is that there's a focus strategy, passing that knowledge on to the next generation so that they can create organizations that truly transform the country, that lives forever, that is a legacy. So that's something that I truly was glad I was a part of. The vision of championing enterprise development and entrepreneurship in Nigeria has been a strong backbone in Fate Foundation's journey in the past 20 years. Faith is still on the same journey. In 20 years, they knew what their focus was, their mission is, is very clear, enterprise and enterprise development. It hasn't changed. Uh, when Mr. Adiola, who is a founder, came in and he, he knew what was wrong at that time and he knew he wanted to fix it. But well, we see even now, in 2020, we're talking about the same issues. Uh, the numbers of youths that are unemployed are even rising. And we can see the deliberate effort that Faith is making to change the, the conversation that we're having in terms of enterprise. I mean, when we started then, a lot of people did not even know what being an entrepreneur was. If I were you told your parents you wanted to be an entrepreneur, they would almost cry because they wanted you to go to the banking sector, they wanted you to have some form of... But it's changed. I mean, everyone is asking questions. They want their kids to do something different. They want people to do make changes. And that's where faith comes into play because they know the reasons why they, they were set to be, to be Faith Foundation and they've stuck with that journey and been very consistent in how they deliver their journey. Faith implements what it also teaches. So the first was, I would say, the founder, his passion for entrepreneurship, he's lived it, he's built it, he's seen it a success. So that he understood what was needed to be able to do that. 
But also in setting up Faith Foundation, they had a strong board. So he got other entrepreneurs, leaders you know, in society to buy into the idea as well. So I remember at that time we almost had like a 17 man board. You know, different people too who had gone through that entrepreneurship journey and also had similar passion with the founder. Being on that board and being, you know, cautious, putting their money also where their mouth was. So they raised the initial funding. I remember um, Mr. Duelatu donating a significant part every year of the requirements of the, um, for Faith Foundation to ensure that um, entrepreneurs actually lent. And then getting also members of the society to come and actually be the facilitators, the volunteers, the mentors, you know, consultants. So it was like we pulled everything that we require. People donated time, people bought into the vision. And you know, so through that, we were able to actually deliver value to the entrepreneurs. And I would also say the entrepreneurs themselves so even the selection process of who comes into the class, you know, it means that we selected the right people because they truly went on to set up our business. They didn't just go back to jobs. A few did, but majority still set up um, businesses, grew their businesses. We also set up the Emerging Entrepreneur Program. All right, people who had businesses but needed to learn how to take it to the next level. So, you know, we've seen them grow their business today and you know employ people add value to society and there are a lot of them that have been successful and and no names in nigeria and a lot of them went through faith foundation i left it over 10 years ago and you've seen it transcend over the years it's absolutely amazing i mean and we, with the use of innovation technology i mean you can tell now that the, the i mean of course eating now the um, nikke is doing an exceptional work and one of those things that you see is that when you look back you're so proud of the fact that you were part of that journey and of course the organization is 20 and you can still the organization is still standing and even doing much better than it was while you were there there's nothing that transcends that and that gives you so much joy when you, when you look back and see that The need for non-profits to support young entrepreneurs and encourage capacity building continues to be a potent force for business growth in the country. In attending to this need, Fade Foundation set up different engaging programs that were tailored specifically for the needs of local Nigerian businesses. I served as head of training for about five years. Um, that essentially meant that I was in charge of programs, and managing you know both the aspiring entrepreneurs program and then of course uh, managing out the volunteers um, very fantastic professionals who committed themselves to supporting entrepreneurs and um, actualize their dreams uh, so that essentially meant that we will do a proper selection involving our volunteers and making sure that we have the right persons in the classroom and then again delivering on our programs we had the relevant curricula um, tried and tested um, you know and then of course um, over the, the years also we were also changing, you know, uh, responding to the demands of the environment, of the you know, market dynamics and whatever it is, again, always because we're getting feedback. Um, so we would therefore ensure that we would deliver the programs so that it works for the entrepreneurs. Um, that essentially meant, you know, making sure that they, they're skilled up to be able to run their businesses. So included management competencies, ability to run their business, but also a lot to do with visioning and strategy, uh, being able to create, you know, the kind of businesses that would last. One of the great things about Faith's evolution over the last 20 years is really how it has continued to adapt itself to meet the needs of the entrepreneurial space and the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we started at a time when people weren't talking about entrepreneurship and started focusing on really helping and enabling people to start their businesses. And then a lot of our businesses started growing and required growth support and we invested that into the kind of programs and the support that we have given. Uh, now we're at a time where so many people um, understand the value of entrepreneurship and there are quite a lot of other organizations that are also investing and supporting entrepreneurs in that space and that's something for me that Fate clearly led and was a pioneer in. From inception, 
Mentorin had been prioritized by Fate Foundation as a catalyst to provide peculiar insight and personalized learning opportunities for entrepreneurs. This driving objective brought about the implementation of several relevant programs to help drive the support initiative of the foundation. So before now at Faith Foundation, the courses or the programs that we're running were our flagship programs called the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program, abbreviated to AEP, and the Emerging Entrepreneurs Program, abbreviated to EEP. Um, so right now, from our generic Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program, we have several other programs under it. So we have the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Digital Program that is in partnership with Facebook designed to help entrepreneurs to transition their businesses from offline to online and help them to understand and better appreciate and then use the various digital platforms available for business growth. So before now, um, the Aspiring Entrepreneurs program would happen only in Lagos but with the way that the program has evolved and transitioned that now has many many branches. We are present in about 16 to 18 um, states in Nigeria and we've been able to reach over 800 entrepreneurs across uh, all of these states in, in Nigeria. The other Aspiring Entrepreneurs program would be the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Tertiary program which is focused on um, students within tertiary institutions who are either in their final year or penultimate years because these are new recruits into the entrepreneurship world so what we do is to um, place them in organizations already existing businesses of their interest um, so that they can sort of job shadow and learn the ropes of that type of business. So how do these programs work to support entrepreneurs in the local and international business space? What we did was to classify our programs into pre-incubation programs and incubation programs. So our aspiring entrepreneurs programs and all the sub-programs underneath it are classified under our pre-incubation programs. And we also have our incubation programs. One of them is called the Next Economy Program. This is in partnership with the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The second uh, incubation program would be the Orange Corners Incubation Program, which is in partnership with the Kingdom of the Netherlands, uh, that is being supported uh, by the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Lagos, Nigeria. The Orange Corners Incubation Program um, started in 2019 and we have completed three cohorts of the program already. We've been able to support these 60 entrepreneurs over the past uh, three cohorts that have been completed with over uh, 160 million Naira. With this funding, these 60 entrepreneurs in one way or the other have been able to expand their businesses, grow and enhance their visibility, gain more customers, uh, because now they have the right tools, equipment, um, they are situated in the right locations and things like that to help them to grow their businesses. Through mentoring, Fate Foundation has been able to guide entrepreneurs in the Nigerian ecosystem like a hand-in-hand -hand relationship to achieve more in their businesses and entrepreneurship journey. We have been doing this since the beginning of um, Fate Foundation. And up to now, we still pride ourselves so high in terms of what we do on our mentoring program. What I like the most is that the next generation of mentors are in there. So all those who are like in the first five to ten years of fate, who themselves were in fate learning, have themselves become leaders, employers of labor, innovators. Greatly, um, our mentoring has been a major support to our entrepreneurs for feedback. Um, a number of them have been able to do great things on their businesses through their mentoring engagement with their mentors. In the last three to five years, one of the things we've done is to say, how do we ensure that we develop entrepreneurs and support them in line with the needs of the overall environment that we live in and the society? And so very primary to us is number one, sector focus. So what are the key growth sectors of the economy? Where do we see entrepreneurship rising the most and also having the most impact? And that's why um, a lot of our programs are still largely sector agnostics, but for the one that we know um, give even much more deep impact, we've invested in ensuring that we're able to build capacities of entrepreneurs in the agribusiness, in the health, in the education, 
space and also in the creative space in particular. The Scale Unit came to Bain in 2017 when Faith Foundation received a grant from Africa Capital Alliance Foundation to launch the Startup Lab Accelerator Program with the primary objective of scaling high potential agribusinesses in Nigeria. So we used that as the pilot. Consequently, the team developed the curriculum, engaged volunteer faculty members, advisors, and then uh, we enrolled the first set of agribusiness entrepreneurs for the Scale Up Agribusiness Accelerator Program. In year 2018, we partnered with the Scaling Up Nutrition Business Network to accelerate high potential businesses in the nutrition and food safety space through the Scale Up Lab Health Accelerator Program, otherwise known as NutriPage. While investing in entrepreneurial growth is at the heart of Faith Foundation's policy, one of its key policies is investing in research and human capacity. In 2015, when Faith Foundation expanded its focus to include research and policy advocacy around entrepreneurship in Nigeria, the goal was to develop data and information around key entrepreneurship issues impacting on entrepreneurs in Nigeria and to drive conversations around policy design, policy um, review and policy implementation. The other thing for us that has been very important is research. You know, research really is primary. In fact, we, have, we learned and we continue to learn from mining our own data and our own information to use that to guide how our programs evolve how we better support our alumni members and how we better really contribute and scale our impact so investing in research whether directly through research development um, for just understanding the ecosystem from a policy perspective to guide our policy advocacy work or investing in research like we recently did with uh, supporting the one of the pioneer research institutes to develop a COVID uh, test um, and, and even research that helps in terms of product development. Do you know what? Despite all the commendable feats by Fate Foundation in the past two decades, the foundation still had to go through some challenges. <laughs> well, these challenges have not been insurmountable. In fact, they have been stepping stones for greater successes. In the early days, one of the key challenges was always raising funds. So one of the things I wanted to do was to now set up an endowment fund. An endowment fund is where you have a pool of money and then through the investments, you are assured that that investment income covers the cost of running the organization. The other thing was also funding. For the businesses that we passed through, a lot of them wanted funding. How do they get money to now fund the business? You've taught them all these things. How are they going to raise money to now grow that business? We were lucky to have very good donors as well. I remember Ford Foundation was one of the very early ones who funded a lot of our printing expenses, you know, salaries and things like that. So that also helps. So I think in terms of challenges, it's still even up to today, I would say the Nigerian business environment needs to improve. Fate has struggled like the rest of us have struggled. Um, it's not been plain sailing for fate all the way. Um, there are a lot of frustrations in this space in trying to achieve your objectives where young people are concerned. But I think that despite um, the limitations, that, that they've done relatively well, as, I mean, considering limitations. So they've grown, they've added um, various other programs to, to their repertoire. From inception to date, Fate Foundation has reached over 180,000 aspiring and emerging Nigerian entrepreneurs who are spread across Nigeria, creating jobs and adding value to the local and national economies. This growth trajectory was solidified as the foundation deepened her strategic footprint in the Nigerian entrepreneurship ecosystem. At the time Fate started, I'm talking about enterprise, um, a lot of them were looking for a family to belong to because ent entrepreneurship was not the thing. Yeah, and Fate was available as a family for them to learn, to grow, to make mistakes, face challenges, we work hand in hand with them. And they, you know, everybody worked together. Um, so no matter how, you don't feel, feel as if you were alone on the journey of life. And that's why the alumni was very successful. The Fate Foundation has a strong brand to us. And, I, and that is evident in the number of years that it's, it's lasted, right? It's been there for 20 years now. So over the time, different types of entrepreneurs have been able to go back to Fate Foundation time and time and time again. Environment in the Nigerian ecosystem 
has been changing right over the last 5 10 15 20 years and i think faith has done a very good job to be able to stay relevant and with that it means that we are able to pick our solutions as times change the point in case is the recent pivot to digital that happened during the covid crisis faith produces courses and and has all sorts of engagements for entrepreneurs from basic inception concept level and there are courses that take you all the way right up to being um, an experienced entrepreneur with a business that has been running four or five years. And so the dynamism of that kind of structure allows Faith Foundation penetrate into different spheres of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Last few years of Faith Foundation, I would definitely say that it's been able to help people start businesses, give them the tools that they're going to be able to use to grow and sustain their businesses and indeed expand their businesses. I've physically and personally witnessed all those amongst our community. Doing successful business in Nigeria is really very challenging and you would need uh, a platform like that of Faith Foundation to help you uh, uh, again not just survive but to actually actually thrive. Faith Foundation has been there for us from day one. I wrote the business plan for Environmental Accord on the EEP program in 2000 and two and that, that was very important for us. Attending the EEP program uh, provided the ground on how a business should run. That was very important for us so I would say yes Faith Foundation uh, was there for us from day one. When I got you know to Faith uh, I think it was a total mindset reset for me. Uh, mindset it, it was like Faith performed a, a mindset surgery. You know, because prior to faith, I used to think entrepreneurship is well, just a means of survival. I, I normally call myself an accidental entrepreneur, you know, so that is prior to faith. But coming to faith, because of that mindset reset, in fact, I moved from being an accidental entrepreneur to a disciplined entrepreneur. So, and uh, I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was completely transformational. I, I think that that's my experience about, you know, with Faith Foundation. Over the last 20 years, I believe Faith Foundation has achieved a measure of consistency. And when I look at the graduates of the program, all that comes out to me is that we've been able to deliver our programs with a measure of consistency that creates value, which cannot be achieved without the volunteers. Um, I can't imagine Faith Foundation without its volunteer core. People who give up their time, professionals, um, entrepreneurs who've achieved so much and even the alumni of Faith Foundation coming back to volunteer to also share all that they've learned from experience from the program. So it's been 20 years of business trainings, mentorships, researches, resourcefulness and growth for Faith Foundation and the success story continues to pour in. But this story definitely would not have been possible without the continual inputs of volunteers, alumni, entrepreneurs, and board members. Our volunteer strategy to me um, is one of the foundational pillars that was started from inception and still continues to be like the elixir in the work that we do. Part of the enablement of the support people give is in resources, is in finances, and it's also in time. But a lot of times, uh, people don't even fully appreciate or quantify that time. And it's so crucial to the work that we do. Adding value to the entire work that we do. And you know, our volunteers really are the heart and the soul of Faith Foundation. If you ask most of our entrepreneurs the impact Faith has made, more often than not, is linked to someone who taught them something, who shared some information, who linked them with a resource, and that made the difference in their business or the success that they've, they've had to date. Right now, we're a team of about 35 people um, who directly deliver this work. But we can't deliver this work if we don't have the wide um, volunteer team who teach, who mentor, who advise, and who also provide and support our content in different ways, you know. We have about 1,200 people who have enrolled and, and it continues to grow and support entrepreneurs in different ways. And if we look even in terms of our volunteer community, probably almost 40% of them have 
I've also come through Faith Foundation. So they finished, they've gotten the benefit, they've grown, and they, they're also giving back, and they're giving back in so many ways. And that's something that always warms my heart and is always inspiring to me. So what has been the experience for entrepreneurs, volunteers, mentors, and beneficiaries in their faith journey? A journey with faith developed as faith de developed because as the years went by, there were more and more programs that were added on. So I went from being a facilitator and a trainer to also becoming a mentor. And as I grew older and my mentees grew older, I became a mentor of mentors. My mentees became mentors themselves. Um, there was quite a bit of consulting, brainstorming. It's, it's been wonderful. He, I had been in Nigeria, I had come to set up a business from the UK and I was talking to Mrs. Lawson, was the ED then, and she told me what Fate was doing. I went around to Fate, the Water Corporation building. Um, she showed me the library, the students, the classes, and I think right there and then I said, okay, what can I do to help? I had been an entrepreneur. In a way, I'm still an entrepreneur and I could see the vision of training entrepreneurs and for me it's very much you take what would normally be a concept what you have in the business school and you bring it to the reality and fate has been able to merge those two into its vision and each time you're sharing your experience with a class AEP or EEP um, you're doing a bit of introspection as to you know I'm talking to you about having your financials, but I haven't actually done my financials. There's a learning bit for the person who's doing the talking. It's a continuous learning for me as it's a continuous um, sharing of knowledge. And the more I share, the more I gain. It's almost the more I tell people, the more I realize that I don't know and I have to go and, and, and learn either for the next class is better. And that's part of what I benefit from being a volunteer. It's one of the things that attracted me and still attracts me to Faith Foundation. My journey with Faith started in 2002 when the uh, Paracourt office was opened on the uh, sponsorship of the World Bank to serve the uh, Niger Delta. I served on the advisory board for quite a long time and eventually joined the main board uh, about 2012. And I left the main board in 2018. During the period, we trained thousands of entrepreneurs in the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program and Special Entrepreneurship uh, Programs. So we have people like, we also have uh, Paul Fo, who is the leading sales trainer uh, in the country. Fate Foundation's contributions to the youth is seen in every sphere with the aim to help more and more young entrepreneurs to start grow and sustain their businesses. Fate Foundation has played and continues to play an active and vital role in Youth Business International's network. They have proved to be an impactful, agile, responsive organisation with a committed, driven and fun team. They have a high profile and deliver invaluable work supporting young people to start and grow businesses in Nigeria. Fate has greatly contributed to YBI initiatives such as the Business Model Innovation Pilot and the Digital Accelerator. They are also an influential member in the African community of practice. They are a great YBI ambassador and have helped raise awareness of our work through well-regarded partnerships such as Facebook and Orange Corners. They are a key contributor to evolving YBI's mentoring, planning and service delivery. And we thank them for their time, their efforts and their energy. For me, the first main win is to actually see the entrepreneurs still being in business, you know, still growing their business, you know, and excelling um, beyond even what we thought. I remember um, Femi Odigbemi, for instance, who came in for our Emerging Entrepreneur Program, and today, you know, he's on TV, Tinsel, everything he's known, he's the leader when it comes to um, content, local content in Nigeria. In fact, even the shoes I'm wearing is Mona Matthews, one of the entrepreneurs. So, you know, so just to see that the businesses for me are still thriving, are still growing, despite, you know, what they would see as the problems. That to me is one of the main success. But also the fact that after I left, we've had outstanding teams that continue to build Faith Foundation. Each one adding their own flavor and still taking Faith Foundation and that it exists. Those are things that I continue to be proud of the Faith Foundation. Surely the founder's commitment continues to remain, the board, you know, the caliber of people that you see on the board. 
uh, truly those who are committed and have given their time and resources to ensure that Faith Foundation continues to grow. All over Nigeria, young people are striving to make an impression, to build a life for themselves and contribute in one way or the other. No matter how little to the growth and development of the country, we see them everywhere, both the educated and non-educated, as they dispel doubts and put their energy, resources and intellects to work in whatever they do. This is at the heart of Faith Foundation's mission, to build generation after generation of people who are not just entrepreneurs, but are able to hold the torch of success for many years to come. And we then think of what is life going to be after us, so we look for a completely different generation of people who we pray will live, uh, will be there when we are gone, okay, to carry on with the banner, you know, uh, we are passing on the torch uh, to a different generation in the knowledge that there's an organization that can stand uh, by itself and all they need to bring to the table now are the individual competencies and um, knowledge and integrity and working with a few of us that are still on the board of faith, uh, learn uh, the history of the institution, the, uh, uh, the thoroughness of the process, they can, they can carry on with it um, in the future. And you know the things that I, I found that has assisted this process of lasting long doing what you are doing. I find governance uh, as a major factor. If we can put governance in place, right, and follow it and follow through with it, um, our chances of lasting longer than most uh, enterprises are so are far, far, far higher than when you don't have governance. As a person, I've always wanted to live, to do 10 things in one lifetime as opposed to do one thing 10 times, okay? So uh, I learned how to build and how to build robustly corporations, human, human gatherings, build them, build them uh, properly. And then when you have uh, finished with the building and you say to yourself, okay, this can now stand and, and run. Go and build uh, uh, something else. You know, it's one thing for young people to go through training and mentoring and also get funding, but it's another thing for them to see what a model entrepreneur looks like. In our environment, there are lots of people who have made money, who are businessmen or businesswomen, but they have not created value. The difference between an entrepreneur and a businessman or a businesswoman is that an entrepreneur creates value. So what does the future look like for Fate Foundation? Uh, well, that future must be positive, right? Must be uh, growth-oriented, must be beneficial to humanity, you understand, and so on and so forth. Um, if I'm alive and I see it, then it will inspire me and give me a, little, a lot of joy. And if I'm not there to see it, the institution is still there and other people are going to see it and benefit and benefit from it. We are currently on a five-year strategy, which we started last year. And when we were mapping out our SWOT with our board of directors, one of the key things that stood out for us, you know, as a strength is our legacy and the faith brand. And not just pioneering the enterprise support in Nigeria, but also the legacy of our founder and our chairman, Mr. Fola Diola. Um, and then also the board members, the different people who have continued to engage and evolve and support our journey. Whether board members from inception or up to our new board members to date. We hear it said the future is what you make of it. Faith is in the business of entrepreneurship. So you're in the business of making and creating the future. Um, the future is what faith is going to make of it. It's what the entrepreneurs are going to make of it. We live in a very exciting time. I know that a lot of people, um, this year has been rough. 2020, unprecedented. We've had the end SARS protest. There's a lot of despondency. There's a lot of negativity in the atmosphere. But there is no better organization than Faith Foundation to chart a future of hope, to create something out of nothing. After all, isn't that what entrepreneurship is? 
creating something out of nothing, charting, going into uncharted territories. I believe that in the next phase of Fate's journey, we're going to see Fate support some industry-defining companies that will shape how society functions. Of course, to get there, we will need to continue getting the best people within Fate Foundation. We need to continue working with some of the best partners in the world to continue the great programs. And of course, Fate has to keep working with tremendous entrepreneurs who are so, so passionate about building lasting companies that even outlive the founders. This is a very exciting future. And I know it's a future that we can all expect to see happen. Fate never leaves you. As you're on that entrepreneurial journey, you continue to grow, you continue to learn, and your needs continue to change and evolve. And that's why we have people who joined Fate in 2000, 2001, and sometimes they come back and take a program, again, like the Emerging Entrepreneurs Program, or we enroll them in a scale-up accelerator program, or through different points, through our alumni support program, uh, we provide support with them. And I think that that, for me, is one of the essential things that Fate does. Continue to grow with you and evolve with you, as your, as, or with you being the entrepreneurs or with our entrepreneurs, as the entrepreneurship journey grows, as the entrepreneurship journey evolves and, and adapts to continue to support them along the way. So fate is at the point where it, it's not, it's not, it's, the future is not happening to fate. Fate is going to create the future of Nigeria.